You know where you are. This is Nollywood Pictures too. I got your memo. Um, I am the uh, mayor of the city of Hope. And uh, without sincerity, I, I want to tell you that I don't know exactly what point you're trying to make. That's why I invited you here, so that we can shed some light on the matter. Please, sir, the young man in question is being detained by your orders. Now, I'm of the opinion that we detaining him indefinitely is not justified, sir. Um, what reasons do you have for coming to this conclusion? One, his offense merits bail, and he's being denied. Secondly, I've spoken to a number of people with regards to his mother's behavior, and majority of them think that she is a very wicked woman Therefore, his allegations could be true. Do you understand what wickedness means? Inspector, do you understand? You sit here before the mayor of the city of Hope and accuse someone of being wicked? Sir, we are keeping the young man because he threatened to kill his mother. Ah, uh, so you want us to release him again so he can go and, and kill his mother? He did make a statement that he would not kill his mother, sir. And we keeping him in detention, in custody, is not right, sir. Inspector, I want you to listen to me. Because I have no intention of repeating myself. Leave that young man in detention. I am not convinced that if released, he will not kill his mother. I don't, you haven't said anything about the outcome of a meeting with the mayor. What did he say to you and where exactly are we going to? We're going somewhere to just sit down and plan, map out things. Plan? I don't understand. What are we planning? You know, I trust your judgment, just that I thought you should give me a clear clue as to what you were up to, you know. My brother, relax. Relax. For once. Relax. Okay. I'm relaxed. Uh, Inspector Ferdinand has just left this office. He said the new statement has been extracted from the young man who threatened to kill his mother. I want that confession. I am not aware of any statement yet. It is possible Inspector Ferdinand has now filed in the statement, sir. Then go back to the office and ask the others. I must, and I repeat, I must have that confession. Not yet, sir. I will do that as soon as possible, sir. When I decided to join the police force, I made up my mind that whatever the case, I will make sure I do it to the best of my ability. Is that why you brought me to this lonely path? Of course, we all know you're a good cop, and so what? Yakubu, I know you're a very good officer, and you are observant. And I'm sure that you have observed some of the wrong things that have been happening in our department. Wrong things? Things like what? Madam Magdalene alleged that her son, Anthony, her stepson, threatened to kill her. I arrested the young man, I quizzed him, and he said he was frustrated, that's how come he made that statement. He later on revoked it, but we are still detaining this young man. Why is he still in detention is my question. Well, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as I know, uh, the young man in question, the suspect, 
is in your custody and you don't need to know what I think before you do what you should do. I think that politicians have hijacked the operations of the police in this city. I don't get it. Okay. I went to see the area commander concerning this matter. Now he said I should go and meet with the mayor. For what? Uh, I know that already. I know you've been to see the mayor, but you're yet to tell me the outcome of your meeting with him. The mayor ordered me to keep the young man behind bars. And I don't understand how legal that is. You know, as law enforcement officers, we are trained to obey orders. If the mayor ordered that you keep the man behind bars, obey the last order, period. Yakubo, are you telling me that even if the last order is not right, as per your conscience, you will obey it? Ferdinand, honestly, I consider this whole thing a waste of time. I mean, is this the reason why we, you know, drove all the way to this place to talk about some cock and bull stuff? I think you should just take me back to the office. Anthony, how are you today? <coughs> You're better? As you can see, I'm uh, just there. Listen, um, I need you to understand that uh, getting you out of the cell is something my superiors are against. But uh, I'm a very responsible officer. And I think you being in the cell is not legal. That is how come I got you out. I understood. Yesterday, you made a statement that you were very frustrated. And that is how come you actually made that particular threat statement. I want to understand what your frustrations were. Officer, a very cold war existed between her and my late father. Though outsiders didn't know about it, but it was hot, it was intense, and I have every reason to believe that she killed my father. You just repeated what you told me yesterday. Nothing new. Why would you say she killed him? My father died in an accident while he was in the same car with her. In an accident. But I can say without fear of contradiction that she masterminded that accident. Anthony, you're making a very serious allegation. Can you prove that? Well, officer, if given the opportunity, I will try my best. I was made to understand that my father, my father died on the spot. And Madame Magdalene and the driver were rushed to a hospital. Now, from what I was told, the driver had little injuries, but he was fine. He was fine, just minor injuries. But. He died. So... What can you make of that? Now, the nurse that attended to them when they were brought in, she came in the morning and she was shocked. She was shocked that the man had died. Because from her professional assessment, the man had no reason to die. He was fine. He, was, he, he wasn't in any danger, though he had bruises, but they, they were just minor things. Right? He was fine. But he died. Anthony, um, whatever you're saying has, has no death. You were just making general statements as far as my knowledge is concerned. you know how I feel right now. I beg you to please believe me and trust me. Madame Magdalene was in the hospital for two weeks and while she was there she never contacted anybody. She didn't call me because she had a plan. 
She knew what, what she was doing. She had a plan and she was in the hospital with money. Now while she was there, she changed the family lawyer and got some, 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 some dude somewhere. She changed the family lawyer. And then she started changing my father's properties to her name. Everything that belonged to my father, she changed to her name. It was after she was done with her fraud. That was when she called me and told me that... He told me that my father had died in an accident. Anthony, I will need you to look me directly in the eye and tell me that it's exactly what happened. confronted her and asked her why. Why she didn't call me? She told me she was in a coma for two weeks. That was what she said. And then I asked a nurse that was in the same hospital and she told me that Madame Magdalene was fine. She was full of life. She was healthy. She was fine. There was nothing wrong with her. She was never in a coma. She was healthy. Now, if... I want to ask you, officer, if that witch was really in a coma, would she be able to do the thing she did while she was in the hospital? I mean, changing, changing the, the, the family lawyer, changing all my father's properties to her name, would she be able to do that while in a coma? Did you confront her? Officer, that was the most, that was the climax of my frustration. That, that was why I made that statement. I confronted her, officer. You know what she told me? What did she say? She told me that her husband and her, that they were one. That everything that belongs to my father now belongs to her. Everything my father labored for now belongs to her. That I should go and look for my own property. Officer, we're talking about things that my father acquired even before he married her. Things that are supposed to be my officer. Now tell me, just be sincere to me. If you had a stepmother and she told you this sort of nonsense, officer, what would you do? Tell me, what would you do? Anthony, it's okay. Anthony, relax. We have a pattern of being police job in this country. And I suggest you stick to that pattern. What do you mean there's a pattern in this country and I should stick to that pattern? Tell me, why do you keep giving some preferential treatment to that young man? A man who threatened to kill his mother should be kept long under custody to weaken his spirit. You let him loose and he will go ahead and carry out his threat. Yakubu, that young man told me in confidence that he was frustrated and that is why he made the statement. He has revoked the statement though. And I want you to read my lips. I believe him. You want to tell me why you believe him so much? I have been doing this job for a very long time. And I've always relied on my instincts. I've solved lots of cases based on my instincts. And this job, this case, my instinct tells me to believe him. So I believe him. And that is why I'm taking him home for proper questioning. <laughs> you see what I mean? You've lost it completely. Tell me, why do you keep breaking protocols for crying out loud? Why? Yakobo, I trust you. That is why I confide in you. And if you betray me, your conscience will pinch you till you die. Ferdinand, you are bringing unnecessary sentiments into this whole matter. And that's unprofessional. You know I don't play sentiments in my line of duty. I know I can get more facts from the suspect when I take him home. When he's relaxed. That is why I'm taking him home. Then bring him into your office and interrogate him like you've always done. Why take him out of the station for crying out loud? Because I want to open a full investigation in that accident. It's possible his allegations are true. It's very possible that the accident was masterminded. I will take the suspect home and get further answers. That is what we do in the police service. It's not over until it's over, until you've checked every avenue. That is the standard, and that is what I will apply. Things are falling so far apart I am losing down My life is turned down This injustice is tearing my heart Says is beginning to question the continued uh, retention of yours, of your son. Why is he questioning who is in the first place? The son has made a new statement, accepting that 
your life is in his hands. So, and the police officer says that uh, according to the provisions of the police act, the boy should be released since he has not committed the murder. I am surprised you're saying this. How dare you? What do you think about releasing a young man who is ready to kill me? Magdalene, I honestly wonder if you realize that the young man we're talking about calls you mother. Oh! Shut up. I am not his mother. How I wish you would have a son who would want you dead. Then we talk about motherhood. Look. If we keep that boy one minute longer than necessary, it will tantamount to violation of the police act and a breach of his fundamental rights. Look, the policeman, the officer, he knows that the boy is being kept on my orders. Mm -hmm. He can tell the press. And that is one thing I don't want. I am a politician. And the last thing I want is for the press to beam their such light at my end. I understand. I'll give you my money. Oh. So that you can give to that overzealous officer. I want Anthony to remain in detention. You can do it. And that is what I'm asking you to do for me. Do it. Magdalene. Most times I wonder if you remember that I am the mayor of the city of Hope. What we're talking about borders on uh, credibility and has absolutely nothing to do with money. And it will never degenerate to that level. I understand. You don't, you don't understand. <laughs> I am surprised with this visit from police detectives. I mean, I am a law abiding citizen. Officers, where did I go wrong? We never said you went wrong anywhere. We came here to ask you to explain to us what you know about Madame Magdalene. Needless to remind you that we know you very well and that's why we came here. Don't tell us lies. What do you know about Madame Magdalene? Hey. Madame Magdalene, that woman is evil. In fact, if there is any word that is stronger than evil, it should be used to qualify her. She came from the pit of hell. And she should be regarded as an apostle of the devil. In all fairness, don't you think it is wrong of you to qualify a human being with all those things you just said now? She ruined the life of my friend. And when the old man wanted to pick up the broken pieces of his ruined life, she set him up in an accident and killed him. Mr. Daniel, I know that you are very much aware you're in the midst of two officers and that whatever you say here and now must be the truth otherwise we will hold it against you someday officers i know what i'm talking about a high chief was forced to give out his two daughters in fact his only two daughters to two russians who couldn't even speak english he was taught to a vegetable and that was the beginning of his sorrow if he now wants to discuss with his in-laws he needs a translator there was no more confidentiality in in-law to in-law discussion. And the man complained bitterly until he died. I put it to you as I'm looking at you now, that you don't even know what you're saying. Officers, I know what I'm talking about. How could you say you know? You said the man was killed in a set accident. Then again, you turned and said the man died. How do you reconcile the two statements? You see, the high chief was taken by his wife to attend the graduation ceremony of the daughter of one of her numerous friends. And, and this, this graduation ceremony we are talking about is graduation ceremony from the nursery school. That was the reason she took the old man to Enugu and the man never came back from that journey. Mr. Daniel, I'm interested in how you came about this information. Me, the man was my friend. He told me everything. In fact, at this stage, he had to tell me that his, his instinct was telling him that his life was in danger. There was nothing we could do until the man died. Well, I guess uh, we've had enough information. Uh, 
Mr. Daniel. We appreciate it very much. No, no, you see, officers, any, anywhere you want me to come and say this thing, even in the law court, I'll come and tell you everything I know about it. I'm willing, very ready. We will call on you someday okay. if we ever need something else. Thank you. You're welcome. You're Thank welcome. you very much. You're welcome. Sir. You're welcome. Barrister F. Young, I had to see judicial officers that participate in perversion of justice. We came here this evening to dialogue with you because we know there is something you know that we need. I don't know why you are leaving us with just one option, and that is for us to dig up the truth on our own. And that is exactly what we are going to do. And needless to remind you that we have the capacity to always dig up the truth. I've told you guys all I know, and that is it. Barrister Ephion, you were able to obtain the letters of administration for yourself and that of Madame Magdalene. Now, did you forget or did you not know that the late chief had a son? I followed the instructions of my client. And that's what I'm trying to do. Now, Barrister F. Young, you obtained that document. Letters of administration in a record two weeks. Now tell me, how were you able to perform that magic, Barrister F. Young? <laughs> you guys are talking as if you don't know I'm a lawyer. I did just that because I'm a lawyer. How did you present yourself to the probate officer? Did you say you were the son, a friend, a brother, relative, bed sharer, or what? I mean, this is becoming somewhat suffocating. I mean, insulting. I won't have you guys insult me in my office. You know what? We came here hoping that as a judicial officer, that you will be open to communicate with law enforcement agents. But listening to you, watching how you carry yourself, judging your comportment, I have every reason to believe that you belong to a different school of thought entirely and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I followed the instructions of my client and that's it. Well, just know that those who twist the judicial processes will be burnt because we are coming after you. You can as well shoot up with your eyeballs. Shoot them out. But it's not nice. Very serious problem, and that's why I'm worried. <laughs> There's no problem I cannot solve. Let me hear it. Madam, you are playing with the issue under discussion, and I'm not quite comfortable with that. What is the problem? Two very intelligent officers are investigating everything. They know what happened. And what are the names of the officers? One called himself Fernand, and the other one introduced himself to me as Mr. Girl. Both of them are inspectors of police. Did they tell you precisely what they're investigating? They asked questions on the accident, and the hospital, and the, the letter of administration. In fact, at a point, I became confused. How did they get to know you? I don't know. They were just talking to me as if I'm a common criminal. I just don't understand. Are 
I understand you're still carrying on with that case, Ferdinand. Is that why you came to my office early this morning? What does that mean? Well, I actually came to talk some sense into your head because you don't seem to understand the implication of what you're doing. Look, Yakubu, you are an inspector like myself. And it doesn't really matter how long you've been on the job. What is important is how well you get the job done. As much as you're an inspector like me, and you've been on the job for a longer period, it doesn't make you a better inspector than I am. Get that straight. Well, if you know this job as much as you claim you do, then you will understand that what you're doing right now is gross insubordination. The mayor is the chief security officer of this city. He has ordered that you stay away from a case, but you bluntly refused and keep carrying on as if though you are not under anybody's authority. I really wonder if that is what you were thought in the academy. It doesn't matter what I was thought in the academy. I have serious work to do. Get out of my office. Ferdinand, you know you cannot afford joint issues with the police authorities. I'll advise you check yourself before you wreck your career. Have a good day. Thanks for the advice, but no thank you. I don't need it. Get out. You are only shouting, and this is not acceptable. Look, we are in a hotel room for Christ's sake. I am a senior government official. The mayor of the city of Hope. I don't have time for you, Thomas. All I am telling you is to call the area commander to order. Now tell me, who are Mr. Ferdinand and Mr. Gill? They are officers known to me. They are decisive officers. What happened? You're asking me what happened. After all the money that I gave you to cover me up, you are standing there and you have the guts to allow those lousy officers to start another investigation into something that we have already covered. How dare you do this to me, Thomas? Why not come down and talk to me sensibly? I haven't the foggiest idea on what you're talking about. Okay. The two mentioned officers went to my lawyer yesterday, quizzed him for almost an hour, locked him in his office, granted him for so long that the man was even confused. Uh, I wasn't aware of this. Are you ever aware of anything? After all the money that I gave you, you want me to give you, you are still giving me the impression as if you are incompetent. Magdalene. Magdalene! It was based on my track record that the Kingmakers made me the mayor of the City of Hope. If I had been incompetent, they wouldn't have chosen me. Then you are not doing enough. Wake up and cover me, cover my truck. We are in this business together. I want you to arise as a chief security officer and tame this evil that is about to come to me. I beg you. I am the chief security officer of the uh, city of Hope. Now tell me, is there uh, any section in the police code that empowers you to search anywhere without the permission of the area commander? There is no such section, sir. So, on whose orders did you uh, raid Barrister Effiong's office? We didn't go to raid his office, sir. We only went there to question him. Uh, on whose orders? Did you go there to question him because I have spoken to your area commander who says he gave you no such approval? With all due respect, sir, we are police inspectors, confirmed police inspectors. Even newly admitted constables need no approval to go and question anybody, sir. So you are now going to teach me police work? With all due respect, sir, there was a mutual suspicion and we only went there to question him, to get certain things clarified. So, on what and what did you quiz him? Please sir, I think it's best that we present it as a report form to the area commander and then he will inform you accordingly. Uh, uh, does this mean now that you are parting ways with your manners? I want an answer to my question. We are going to present every single answer in writing. That is police standard. And we are trying to follow that standard, sir. That's other nonsense, utter bunkum. 
I don't want anything in writing. Sit down. I want you to tell me everything that you discussed with the lawyer. Everything. Here. I can see that Mayor has a lot to hide. A lot to cover in this matter. And uh, there's no way we are not going to give up. I'm seeing this thing differently. This is an opportunity for us to prove to superior governments that we can uncover crime in this city. The government is paying us so well to stamp out crime and we must stand up to that very responsibility. I agree with you. There is no turning back. You see, men who are commissioned to protect and prosecute the law must do only one honorable thing. That is to settle down to protect and prosecute the law. This is our business and we must be committed to that very business in this city, the mayor or without the mayor. I agree. I will see you. man was a problem to Chief at home. He complained bitterly about her before his death. The allegation that she may be connected with his death might be valid after all when investigated. So you were asked to withdraw your services and you didn't ask why? Well, actually, she called me on phone. I, 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 I did not know she was calling from the hospital. She asked me how much they owed me, and I told her. The following day, I got a credit um, alert that the amount has been uh, deposited in my account. Thereafter, I got a letter informing me that my services were no longer required. That was all. But it's a Valentine. I'm sorry, but we find it very difficult to believe that you didn't suspect anything. Did, 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 did you make any effort whatsoever to get your job back? Well, actually, officers, I was already sick and tired of the job. She, she required me to come and seek approval and, 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 and explanations for every action I had to take. You know, but Chief was not like that. Chief would encourage you to use your discretion, make personal inputs, and all that, you know. But, but, but she, she never trusted anybody. She was always suspicious of everybody, and <laughs> I, I couldn't work with her anymore. So when she, the letter came informing me that my services were no longer required, I, I, I simply accepted it. Tell us your impression about her. She is problematic. She is highly unpredictable. Very, very, very unreliable. You see, I would not recommend her to anybody. Sincerely. I wouldn't. How many years have you worked for this lady? Five, six years, there about. Okay. All right, uh, Barrister Valentine. Thank you so much for your time and your effort. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, officers. I'll do anything I can. I will offer any assistance to resolve this um, mother. You know, Chief, Atom was a role model, a big role model. And, and he, it's not right that he should just die like that. Officers, I swear, I didn't do anything. Huh? I have never assisted in vandalizing any car at all. Besides, I'm a good mechanic. Mechanic, slow down. Just calm down. Nobody's here to arrest you. And we never said you vandalized cars. We are undergoing an investigation and we want to ask you simple questions. Okay? Okay. Thank you, sir. You know, I thought you meant to arrest me, but I hope there's no problem. Hey, hey, hey. You shut it. You were the very mechanic that serviced Shifatongo's car, is that correct? Mm, yes, officer. He serviced his car, but he's only one of them. He's 230 Mercedes. 230 Mercedes. Chief Atongu died in that car. Are you aware of this? Uh, officer, now so I had. Uh, but I was not the last mechanic that worked 
on that car. What do you mean? Uh, Chief Atuomo was not the kind of man that played with his car. Eh? I knew him very well. In fact, he always settled for the best papers available. For nearly six years, I serviced that car. It was his driver that always brought that car here. But within that week, Chief Atuomo died. Madam Mandarin drove that car into this mechanic village with some useless papers. Eh? Asking me bonny face to fix those useless papers for her. Eh? And I look at it, I refused. Why did you refuse? Officer, there are so many vital reasons why I refuse. One, those papers were so bad. Eh? And besides, I'm a man of integrity now. Nah? And the, the chief at home I knew very well we never allow such parts to be used in his car. I was even willing to assist her get the original spare parts. But you know women and their selfish interests, she just suddenly got angry with me and drove out. Yeah? Instead she took that car to my friend uh, at the other garage, uh, waiting be named, uh, high center or low center, I, I, I can't remember again. Yeah? And he agreed to fix those spare parts for her. The next thing I had was that the car lost control at the tow plaza and Chief died in the process. Okay, wait. Um, <clears throat> are you saying as a professional mechanic that it's possible that the bad spare parts could be linked to why the car lost control? Is that possible? Officers, I believe so. That the spare parts may have disappointed and the car went out of control. That is possible. Whatever you are saying is the truth. Nothing but the truth. Huh? I'm a good man. You can write it down? With all pressure. You said that the parts on the car were of better quality than the ones that she brought. Now the question to you is this. Why did you then replace the good quality ones with the bad ones as a professional mechanic as you are? Officer, I told her, but she said she wants to keep the original spare parts in her house. It was strange, but I have no choice than to do it. So what happened to the original spare parts? Did she take them with her eventually? Yes, officers. I said, can you tell us precisely the exact things she changed in the car that day? Uh, she changed the two ups, the right side. That's by the owner, car owner's side. She changed the shock absorbers. Then she also changed the brake system completely. That's all, sir. Hi, sir. Do you know her husband sat at that side of the car four days after you changed those parts? They had an accident and he died. Officers, I don't know this woman and the husband from Adams. I only did what she asked me to do to, to change this paper for her and that's all. So it's not my fault, officers. I only changed the part for her. They should not implicate me here, please, officers. Okay, the investigation is still ongoing. If we need your service, we will come back. Your hair goes to come out. They they straight hair. Like say no let you play pass. I beg you. Come on there. Yeah. Play game yeah, or you pick. Boniface is a dead man. Ah. Boniface is dead. In fact, turn the fire, Boniface. Ah. Turn the fire, smother. His father, his generation. I said, hey, I said, I said, I said, come down, come down. Okay. It's okay, calm down. down. That was why you want to keep on me, Shama. I did not take his customer away from me, Mo. She came in and I serviced her car for her. She paid me and she left. The next thing I saw was that Boniface has called police for me to arrest me. You should go to the talk to him. For this Shaman. Shaman. police. Oh. Can you call police for you? Yes, oh, Shama. You serious go to the talk to I am very serious. They even asked me a lot of questions. For you to see that Boniface is already a dead man. Ah. If I turn the fire Boniface, I will kill Boniface. Shaman, I will kill him. Oh. I will kill Boniface. I said, calm down. Relax. 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 Inspector Yakubu, I have lots of things to cover and I will appreciate it very much if you go straight to the point. You don't tell me to go straight to the point because you know the point already, Inspector Ferdinand. Young officers in this command are becoming disobedient and that is because you are disobedient. I will give you the benefit of the doubt. 
I have lots of people to question. I have a long list of appointments. Please, what do you want? Listen, I want you to stop going out with Mr. Gill. He is a bad influence. And if you keep going out with him, your promotion is going to be affected. I don't care about promotions. I am not desperate for promotions. I have a duty to do what is right. And that is what I am doing. If I should get a promotion, I want it to come because of my hard work and my diligence. Because I deserve it. I want it to come from above. You see what I mean? Listen, man. Promotion cannot come from above for you because you are disobedient to the officers above. Drop the case they asked you to drop and wait for your promotion. Inspector Yakubu, when I meant above, I meant heaven. Not your officers that manipulate promotion. I will never please my conscience to satisfy your men. I will follow my heart. I will play my part of honor. So now, if you don't mind, I need to lock up my office. Our constitution in this mechanic village states that nobody reports any matter to the police without it being handled in this office. Why did you go to call police for high sense without reporting here first? I never call police for high sense, yo, or anybody for this matter at all. Eh? By the way, what have I done to deserve all this embarrassment? See, see, if you don't know, the police you sent to him took him to one corner and pressed on him for almost 30 good minutes. Point of correction, eh? Mr. Salisu. They questioned me for one whole hour. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, I sent them. Yeah, they don't need to tell me that you sent them before I know that you sent them. What do you mean by that? <laughs> no sense. Sit down, sit down. No sit sense. Down. Uh, my friend, now you listen. The police in question here, they were even suspecting that it was Madame Mandaline that planned the accident that led to the death of her husband. They even came to me, asking me if I was the last person that summoned the car. And I said no, it, that it was Hyacent. Eh? That was all now and they left. Why was you send them to me without telling me? They didn't come to you away too now. Eh? So? Wait, wait, wait. Did you say they were asking questions on uh, Chief uh, Atom Muska? Exactly. In fact, they nearly killed me with their questions. And yeah. that is why you want to kill me. But if yeah. that is why you want to kill no me. No problem. I'm the I didn't bring the police to what you say. That is why you want to kill me. Yeah. But if okay. you are an enemy. I know. You're one of the most educated mechanics we have around here. How will they be able to get their source? I don't know their source, so I don't know. But they are suspecting the woman that she planned the accident that killed her husband. How can they accuse her without evidence? From the way they are even questioning me. It's very clear they are trying to reopen the case. Mm. Reopen case? They are trying to reopen it. Uh, I said, how are they able to trace the mechanic? I don't know. Huh? But policemen are dangerous. They are very dangerous. If they are doing investigation, especially if they are very serious about it, they will do anything to any length that even you will be confused. I, I, I tire her. I tire her. I am a responsible nurse and a law abiding citizen of this country. I am telling you the truth I know about the matter. What about the driver? Um, do you think he was killed? or he died a natural death? I cannot say that, sir. But when I left him the preceding night, he was okay. I remember the doctor on duty wanted to discharge him, but the medical director said no. When I returned the next day, I was stunned to hear that he died in the night. At this point when the doctor on duty wanted to release the driver and the medical director said no, where exactly was Madame Magdalene? She was with the medical director in his office. Do you know that it was reported that Madame was in coma for two weeks? What? She was never in coma. She was very okay when they were rushed in. Actually, she spent the better part of the evening making laws and laws of telephone calls. She was okay. You said they were rushed in. Who rushed them in? I don't know their names, but they were two in number. Chief was already dead and uh, his driver had a slight wound on his right hand. The lady was very sound. Now let us assume there is a kind of miracle happening now. And those men that rushed them in appears right before you. Can you identify them? Can you recognize them? 
If I see them again, or maybe their pictures, I will be able to recognize them. Yes, I will. How about the medical director? What do you think? What is, what's your opinion? Is he professional enough? Hmm. To me, he qualifies more as a businessman because he doesn't follow the medical ethics at all. He doesn't. Okay, uh, madam, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. If we need you, we will give you a call or we will stop by. Enjoy your day. All right. Your office issued letters of administration on the estate of Shifshideba to, to Madam Magdalene and uh, one barrister Effion. Now, Mr. Private Officer, we came here to ask you a very simple question. Are you telling us that you are ignorant of the fact that Shifa Tuong has a son who is old enough to be an administrator in his father's estate? Before I was sent from the state capital, the officer that was here before me committed that blunder. I could never have done such a thing. But uh, have you gone through all the files? to ensure that every requirement was met? Yes, I've gone through the files. There are more than 30 administrative procedures that must be followed before letters of administration are issued. But these were not followed. Could you please tell us these administrative procedures that ought to be followed, that weren't followed? First, the relationship that exists between the disease and the applicants must be stated. This was not done. Then, a gazette must be published for anyone that is against the issuance of letters of administration to the applicants to petition with reasons. Then the public has one month to object. This was not followed because the letter of administration was issued 10 days after the first application. Now, how do we locate this probate officer that was here before you. He was fired for corrupt practices. And even right now, the Attorney General is trying to prosecute him for bringing the judiciary to such a serious disrepute. I don't know his present address right now, but if I make inquiries, I think I might find it. Now, Mr. Probate Officer, can you lift your telephone and begin to make that inquiry immediately? I'll do that in my own time. Please. Mr. Addison, we are still waiting for you to tell us how you got the power to produce letters of administration within 10 days. Something that takes as much as two months to acquire. You see, the application came in with urgency. And I treated it with urgency it deserves. I use my discretion as a then probate officer. I don't need to derive any power from anywhere. As I was, they, I have the authority myself. I see. Can you just explain some of the processes you, you went through to make this possible? Well, uh, you see, all rules, whether official or private, uh, have exceptions. The application came in with urgency, and uh, I, as I used my, my power and my capacity as a probate officer to treat the matter uh, without uh, uh, the rules and bureaucracy. It is done everywhere like that. Mr. Allison, I put it to you that you were contrary to lay down administrative procedures that ought to be followed as concerning the issuance of letters of administration. You did it your way because Madam Magdalene bought you, bought your conscience. Is that correct, Mr. Allison? No, no, you are wrong, Mr. Officer. You are wrong. Uh, nobody has bought me. And nobody can buy me even. You see, uh, Mr. Allison, I, I'm interested in your work. When you left the service, you left at level 10, right? 
You are right, Mr. Officer. But why, why ask? No, because um, we, we took interest in your salary structure. How much was your salary as at the time you, were, you left the service? What has my salary to do with this? Eh? What has my salary to do with the, the matter under discussion? It would interest you to know that we found out that you have as much as 30 million naira worth of capital shares in ABC PLC. How did you come about such money? You know me as a retired civil servant, but I'm sure you don't know me as a businessman then. I was a businessman. What was a business? You were a businessman? Yes, of course. You can swear I feel a bit. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. You shouldn't be playing with everything. Madam, I'm not playing. No. Those people spent nothing less than three hours grinding those mechanics, seeking information from them. You assured me you have put the mayor and the police under your control. Why then are they going about asking questions? Do you know the names of the officers? I don't know. They were questioning my colleagues, not me. And did your colleagues tell them anything? That is one question I cannot answer because I was not there. But I must let you know that there's no way well-trained policemen will question mere mechanics for three hours and will not extract useful information from them. Mr. Keke, that is the reason you should go back and control your mechanics. They're under you. You must order them to shut their dirty mouths. Don't get me angry. I take or beg you don't make me verse at all. What do you mean by order my mechanics to shut their mouth? Do I tell you I know they went to the police? I'm telling you that the police came and they were questioning people heavily and you're asking me to tell my men to shut up. And that is one reason you must tell them to shut their mouths. Okay, okay. Remember I paid you good money to cover your side. You must not fail. I've been covering my end. You're supposed to cover yours, but you failed. You're supposed to have the police under your control. If I get any visit from the police again, from any of the zones, I'll kill you. <laughs> okay, okay. Threatening me, Madam Matali. <laughs> I will teach him a lesson he will not forget. Your assurance was that the law is under you. Yes. And you assured us that everybody is protected. Wait a minute, Alison. They quizzed you too. Oh, so you know already. For Christ's sake, why are these people going around questioning everybody? I don't know why. I have already lost my job because of the assistance I gave you. Eh? I've already lost my job. You promised everything that everywhere is protected. Why you protected nothing? Why nothing is done? Now I'm here trying to pick the broken pieces of my life. And if you don't, if you don't work this miserable conspiracy off my back, I'll come after your head like a wounded lion. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, are you also saying that you are going to kill me? I don't know. I don't know who else is, is after your head or who wants you dead. But you got me right. If you cannot ward them off, then and then I will venture the unimagined. I will. Alison, you kill me. It's a promise. You leave me with the impression that you are hiding something from me. I am not hiding anything from you, sir. 
I don't know how they managed to trace me to my new address and they asked me many questions. For goodness sake, this is what you have been saying. I want to know the specific question they asked you. Ah. Tell me! <laughs> uh, what's the meaning of this, gentlemen? Your name is Dr. Joe. Of course. We know that much. We are police detectives. This is Inspector Ferdinand. I am Inspector Gill. So what can I do for you? Dr. Joe, there is no need to fret. We just want to ask you simple questions. You can go for now. Okay, sir. I have seats, gentlemen. Don't worry, we are okay standing. We are very okay. Dr. Joe! Are you a medical doctor or you are just a doctorate degree holder? What sort of question is that? Eh? Anyway, I'm a medical doctor. Fantastic. Now, during your courses, did you pass all your examinations during your course? It sounds more funny that, than it is stupid. For goodness sake, I passed my Courses, all my courses, I pass them. Common sense should tell you that I cannot be a medical doctor without passing all the relevant examinations. Common sense should also tell you that in your line of profession, ethics will not allow you to make false reports. Am I correct, Dr. Joe? I don't understand what you mean by writing false report. That is about fine, Dr. Joe. For me to show you this document. Take a look. Because we have reason to believe that you are the very fraudulent authority who signed that false report. Of course, I signed the report. But I don't know what you mean by false report. The information contained in this report is false and fraudulent. Look, my friend, you can't say that because you are not a medical expert. We have gone to question Madame Magdalene and she confirmed to us that she was never ever in coma in your hospital. But your report said that she was in coma under your care. So what do you call it? Authentic report? I don't know what you are talking about. And besides, she can't say she wasn't in coma. She can't! Dr. Joe, in her state of coma, as reported by you, Madame Magdalene was able to fired her lawyer and then hired another lawyer who acquired for her letters of administration. Something that you cannot get within 10 days, but she got it. Now she took charge of her husband's estate. Are you aware? Of course, that's not my area. So I know nothing about that. No, no Dr. Joe, you should know. You should know because everything happened under the state of your personal induced coma here in your hospital. You should know everything concerning what she did. Now open up your mouth and speak. Tell us what you know we want to hear. In that case, I'm not going to answer any other question until I get across to my lawyer. Dr. Joe. What are you doing? It was reported that it was you that personally rushed Madame Magdalene and company to this hospital. Am I correct? That's not correct. I was here when they were brought in by two men. Fantastic! We knew that wasn't correct. Who are the men? Open your mouth and answer the question, Dr. Joe, because you need no lawyer to tell us the men that brought them in. Who we are they? Okay, okay. They were brought in by one Mr. Okeke, whom I was told is the chairman of Mechanic Union. It is reported that one of your doctors, after examination, realized that the driver was in no form of danger. He wasn't wounded and I wanted to discharge him. Is that true? Correct. On professional consideration. And, but you refused, Dr. Joe. The doctor wanted to discharge this driver, but you refused because you and Madame Magdalene had a plan and that was to kill the driver during the night. 
And that's what you did. You killed the driver during the night. Is that correct, Dr. Joe? You are not correct at all. In fact, I can't think of a better fabrication than that. And then the man died in the night. Nobody killed him. For goodness sake, why should I kill him when I don't even know him? I think the time has come for you to call that lawyer of yours because you are in some deep, deep shit. You see, even when you are making every effort to cover the truth, the truth is coming out because your face betrays you. All the lies you are saying, they are written on your face. Now, look, okay, listen to me. We can remove you from this case. We can expose your name completely and face the real criminal. But you have to open up to us. Tell us the truth that we need, which you know. Where is that car now as we speak? Where is the car? You. Okay, okay.